We're going to space, people. <laughs> That's amazing. That's kind of cool. We're in Quebec City with yeah. mom. Yeah. Obviously, I have to show Canada the downtown marina. Incredible, amazing, one of a kind. It feels weird being a tourist where you grew up. This was my first marina ever. She's gonna I'm canceling my flight. Hi, my name is Kenna, and this is Jay. We live aboard our Choi Lee Offshore 41. Her name is Sitka. Currently, we are sailing and exploring our beautiful home here on Vancouver Island in British Columbia, Canada. I'm new to sailing, but I'm learning and loving it more and more each day. Jay, on the other hand, was born a salty sailor. As he takes me under his wing to get ready to sail around the world, join us on our adventure of falling in love with the beauty of life and the wonders of each other. Welcome to the story of us. Welcome to Sailing Sitka. Alright, I got my shades on. Can I only mean one thing? We're going to space, people. <laughs> no, but seriously. Um, this is our hydro vane. Uh, you can check our wannabe install video in one of the previous episodes. Um, upon installing this, uh, hydro vane actually emailed us graciously after watching our video and instructed us that we should probably raise it by a couple inches due to the fact that our actual boat kind tends to ride heavy on the stern which is true so we uh, did that um, but now one of the problems we ran into is the counterweight here interferes with this uh, push bit higher bar so I just put a lashing here which is quite hard to take the strain um, of these because the, the outboard pulls out and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut uh, this upper bar here so that this can move freely um, <clears throat> So here goes nothing hopefully uh, this does the outboard doesn't fall over um, So I got my shades on uh, I've got the extension cord. I got a hose here So I'm gonna pre-wet a bit of the area just so sparks don't ruin the, the paint and I got my grinder with a cutting disc on here They're notorious to break in in a million pieces and flying in your face. So hopefully that doesn't happen so uh, let's get started. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I survived my first mission of space. Here's a view from our cockpit. So now we have an open section. Here's the bar. Um, so I didn't completely cut it to here because I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little end piece here and an end piece there and just have a little turnbuckle thing so I can tighten it when I'm not using the wind vane just to secure this a bit more because as you can see like this side's fine because like there's not much weight on there and that's totally fine but here like this is a 15 horsepower um one other thing i might do is might put a brace piece here so this could hold on to here um and i might actually add a leg from here to the base of this just to make this a little stronger because i'm not a fan of this wobble at all um it was quite a lot more solid before i cut that bar obviously but um yeah like it's fine for coastal sailing and stuff but once we're offshore and want to heal and take in heavy weather or um yeah i just want to make sure that this doesn't go flying and rip shit off the deck so i'll be uh, adding that to my list of things i need to do here in the upcoming couple of weeks we have left so i did a quick little lashing here um just something really quick um but in the meantime but this is like a lot more solid so i'm happy with that for now but I still want to go ahead and have something here. I'm going to file this off and probably put an end cap and just have a way of tightening this. What I might do actually now that I'm looking at it is I might put a just a lashing here diagonally that goes like here and then like an X so that I can this can still go around but it's going to transfer a little bit of that load to the other side. Triangles are strong. 90 degrees angles, not so much. So um, we'll do that. Anyways, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you, you cats, kittens, all you nice people go. And listen to some 90s hip hop in here.
the moment has come. So we've been putting money in this jar for a, over a year now. Uh, yeah. A year. Yeah. yeah. And now we're about to crack it. And we're going to be using this money to buy our provisions for our upcoming offshore sale. So... Whoop, whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's we're about see. to count it all. That's going to take a we're while. We're starting hot for the <laughs> Well, I'm happy we were off. <laughs> we're off by quite a bit. This is how much money was in that jar. $306.65. That's, that's that's amazing. That's, that's, a couple, that's a couple bags of ramen right there. That's amazing. That's kind of cool. Because I guessed 133.34. And <laughs> I guessed 120. We were like way off. Just in, just just in the twenties and fives should have like spilled the beans. But the toonies True. was the our toonies was the highlight. Yeah, toonies came up to ninety dollars. Yeah, ninety dollars. That was the high high spot. See, that's so cool because like we just accumulated pocket change for like a year, and we right. see we didn't really think anything of it until we counted it and. Now that's going to help so much with our provisions. So that's amazing. Yeah, it's really rad. Woohoo! Whoop, whoop. <laughs> We're in Quebec City with yeah. mom! Woo! We're on the Quebec City Bridge. And right under that bridge on the South Shore, there is Magna saint romuald Magna de la Chaudière. And that was the first marina where I had my first boat, that Sandpiper yeah. 565. And I used to bike across this bridge because I didn't have a car. So I would bike from saint Foy, which is on the other side, bike all the way around saint Gamerad, go down this hill, and then get either in my Explorer 200 from Canadian Tire or get the little dinghy service and go to my boat and then learn how to sail and figure shit out. So it's cool. But yeah. This is amazing. That's cool. You like it? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm in Europe. Yeah, it's There's a lot, so lot different culture. than BC. There's so much culture. So many people. And you see the uh, that puff? Yeah. That's the other one. So we went through the top one. That's the bottom one. First impressions of um, Quebec City. Incredible, amazing, one of a kind, fantastic. I'd never want to leave. <laughs> we'll have to sail here one day to my home port city. I am in complete awe of this special and unique city. While strolling through downtown, just admiring the pure love and passion this place admits, we came across this church. What didn't seem to be a charming church on the outside completely knocked us off our feet when we entered this heavenly ancient building. Built in 1664, the Notre Dame de Quebec Basilica Cathedral, or otherwise known as La Basilique de Notre Dame de Quebec, took my breath away in all of her glory. I had goosebumps for 20 minutes straight while admiring each and every nook and cranny this magnificent structure had to offer. Feels weird being, it feels weird being a tourist where you grew up <laughs> in. <laughs> so if you watched my episode where I recount how I ended up being a sailor, well, this is how, where it all started. These are literally the benches I would come and sit in, sit on to, uh, to watch the St. Lawrence while it was frozen over until the next spring where I could finally put my boat in the water. And you can tell there's a sailboat here sailing. I used to have to come up from over there. Um, yeah, 
it's kind of cool to be back. Aww. Kenneth's updating Roger, her dad, on the architecture. I think it's safe to say I am in love with every aspect of Quebec City. I have never experienced culture in this manner, and now that I have, I feel truly grateful. Everything from the kind-hearted and efficient people, the breathtaking architecture, and the food. Oh, the food. Everything is done with such passion. It is truly inspiring. Are you kidding me? Not good. <laughs> I gotta watch sailing videos, you know? Like, yeah, I'm far from the ocean, so I gotta All bring myself in inwards. Second, We're watching Rick Moore right now. Some boat dragged onto his bow. Like, we're in Quebec, and this man found the opportunity for <laughs> the sailing channel. Oh, like, Jesus. <laughs> This is La Bay in Saguenay, Quebec, and we're part of the Hat Gang now. <laughs> this is the Hat Gang. Watch out, we're coming. As Jay just kindly informed you, this is in fact Saguenay. A beautiful city with a population of 90,000 spread across the rolling hills of this beautiful bright blue and green region of Quebec. Different from the city, people here ride their 4x4s to the gas station while saying bonjour to nearly everyone they see. A smaller and tighter community-based environment, much like the one I'm used to in Alberta, I felt quite at home here. While touring around in Jay's dad's Mustang, we stumbled across this old wooden bridge built in the 1900s. It is known as Pont de Ferme Rouge. I was built in 1931. She's still going strong. Kenna, Kenna sees the two desserts and then grabs the biggest one. <laughs> and it's her first time tasting this. This is actually called a nun, a nun fart. I'm not making this up. No, it's a nun fart. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> and the view's pretty. So. How do you say it in French? Pet de Sara. Pet de Alright, tell me how you... Oh, it's hot. Yeah, it's hot. Hey. Huh? Isn't that good? Oh my god. That's the best fart you'll ever eat. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Jay found himself some sailboats. Who's surprised there? The day before, we came across another local marina closer to Jay's dad's house, where we met an incredible sailor. He was an older gentleman who built himself five sailboats in his lifetime and was already striving to build the sixth. He's an odd duck, to say the least, but that's just the kind of characters we are accustomed to meeting, and we love every minute of it. Fair winds and following seas to you, good sir. Obviously, Kenna found the yellow chair and sat in it. It's her favorite color. How are you liking Sagney? I love it. It reminds me of Couch and Bay back home. Yeah, it does. It's really it's nice, it's quiet, it's peaceful. And there's a nice cute marina. Yeah, it's pretty. I just found my new house. Look, this is the view out of the window. <laughs> Sagne is much like our home back in BC. The dark blue waters surrounding the foresty green hills, it's a familiar feeling admiring this view, to say the least. A big part of us loved this region of Quebec and vowed one day to sail Sitka in these glorious waters. These are 
some uh, these are some wide cleats. I mean, if if you can't turn up a figure eight on here, you got some issues. You got some issues. <laughs> so this is a natural source of water you can drink, yep. but this translates to fountain of the devil. Wish us luck. It's nice and cold, huh? It tastes good. Oh, it is. It's water from the mountains, filtered by the rocks. You want to try it, huh? Also filtered by the devil. <laughs> well, the devil's upstairs, but I mean... He's supposed to be downstairs, usually. Yeah, but <laughs> that's those that believe in that. And we? I feel possessed. You feel possessed <laughs> by what? <laughs> and in the winter time, see the size of those rocks? Yeah. When the ice leaves, these rocks sometimes disappear. Oh my god! It yeah. pulls them out. And you're not allowed to go down with a, a bulldozer or anything. So not the, the last time, but the time before. I got the rocks dropped upstairs with a bull, brought them here, dropped them with the cream because I couldn't go down there. <laughs> There's a rainbow. There's a rainbow. Under in... the rainbow. And then watch out, this is my this is my dad's cat. This is Leon. 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 Leon the fat cat. And then where's the Oh look at Look at Leon, you cutie pie. Where's Chico? Chico? Where's... He's gone with his mother. No, oh, Chico. Chico! Chico! Chico, you crazy dog. You're a crazy dog. You're a crazy dog. No, no. See, now it's sunny outside, it's raining. Yeah, that's Chico's way of saying hi to all you guys. So make sure, make sure to give a comment and say hi back to Chico. This was my first marina ever. That's where I was with my boat Flipper 2, the Sandpiper 565. So this is where we put boats on the water. This is a little yacht club. And then now it seems like they all put the mooring balls over in the St. Lawrence more, but this is the mouth of the Chaudière River. Um, and when there's a lot of current, all the mooring balls can get pulled into the St. Lawrence. So they have, you have to actually leave and go to either Magnet Silly or Magnet Livy. Um, but I used to be, on the back side of that dock, there was a few mooring balls there and that's where I used to be. And uh, that's where it all started for me in the sailing world. And that's where that, that old salt came and told me how to run my life on the boat and like showed me the ins and out of boating, the beginning of it anyways. And then I stepped in that boat and saw that actually people did live on boats. And that's it, we gotta go, we gotta hurry because we gotta get on this little ferry to go downtown Quebec City. So follow me, let's go. And you see all the moorings are over there. And there's a trimaran right there. There, They used to be there, but now um, there was a lot more back there too. And now it doesn't seem like they still do that. You're so close to your face. I'm so close to my face. All right. And yeah, in the winter, some people left their boat there. So I'm pretty sure that boat, I'm, I'm actually 100% sure that's an Alberic 30, which a shout out to my buddy Mike. It used to be his first boat. And that's my mom. And we're showing, <laughs> we're showing Kenna. So just, just four spriders on this mast, nothing to see. So this is a cool race boat. That draft is insane though. That's looks like probably 12 foot of draft. And he's got a bulbous keel, fin keel. Looks like mild steel, but it's a pretty cool boat. <laughs> There's a sailboat over there. He's got the tides with him. There's one over there. Looks like he's got his spinnaker up. He's going downwind. It would be pretty much impossible right now to go uh, to go this way. Just when the current and the tides against you here, it's forget about it. You're just gonna not go. Like you can, if you just look at the water, you can tell how much current there is. And there's not a lot of wind right now and it would be up, you'd be sailing upwind as well. So I learned that the hard way on my first boat. There's a few times where I was literally going backwards with all sails up and the outboard going. 
So yeah, mm. I had to learn to time my stuff. Even in BC, around Vancouver Island, we have to do that too, but not, not as crazy as here though. Bonjour. Le the captain. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Sylvie bought us tickets to take the ferry to downtown. And we're about to go for some brunch. Yeah. And maybe some shopping. Maybe what? Shopping. Yeah, maybe. Ah. No, surely. We don't have room on the boat, <laughs> except for tools and boat stuff. I know we'll go to the Chateau Frontenac too. Yes. We'll go to visit the castle. Mm, the castle. Yeah. Thank you, Sylvie. Oh, you're welcome. So, unlike the BC ferries, this isn't the double ended. And no. Right? No. So you can't get off the other side. Like. No. Yeah, that's cool. Actually, they might be. But I doubt it. I doubt it. I just know that the BC ones are the biggest double ended ferries in the world. Um, this is not even close to the same size. This probably fits only like 60 cars versus BC ferries. Don't quote me on this, but it's definitely several hundred at least. Oh, yeah, for and sure. several like big, big rigs, like big trucks, because we get a lot of our goods. Via the ferry in BC. This is actually a bigger ferry than I thought, though. Yeah, well, but I mean, a lot of people take this to go to work every day since yeah. the, that avoids them having to drive like a lot of kilometers in traffic to go get the bridge. So, for people who work downtown and that live in this area, it saves them quite a bit of time. And I think it's only like, you know, $7 or something for them. And it's you can probably big. get a pass too, as well. So. It's only about five minutes. <laughs> 10 yeah, minutes maybe, maybe 10 minutes from but door to door. 10 minutes, 10 minutes. <laughs> but it has a beautiful view. <laughs> and of course you wanted to be on a boat. <laughs> yeah. Can't go wrong it's with boats. It's just too long for swimming. <laughs> yeah, that would be too long for <laughs> swimming. <laughs> mm. I'm back to my favorite place on earth and I'm yeah. never leaving. She's gonna I'm canceling my flight. <laughs> it's a good idea, baby. Yeah, it's a good idea. I don't want to go. On va aller prendre un pet au lait, un café au lait. Oh, Quebec. I was foreign to the concept of your beauty and the feeling of home you leave within my heart. I had no idea a place with such a different lifestyle than I'm used to could feel so similar within my soul. Like a part of me belongs here, within these cobblestone streets and lively way of life. Thank you for all you had to offer. I know I will be here again soon when the time is right. As per traditions, we're putting our stickers. We got the classic Quebec license plate with the tabarnak, which is a swear word that I say a lot when I'm working on the boat. <laughs> And this one is from Saguenay, which is pretty sticker. And this is where my dad lives. And I had never been to that area, but it's really, pre really, really pretty. We went to see a lot of sailboats. Thanks, Dad and Marlene for taking us there. And thanks to my mom, Sylvie, for taking us in Quebec and exploring <laughs> Le Petit Champlain with us. It was amazing. And we even got to go see a race boat at Magna de Livy. And I showed Kenna my first marina ever. Yeah, it was such a good You want trip. it like this or like this? However you want. It was Straight, nice. I think. Straight? Sure. Yeah, I think yeah. this one. Just is. cover the, like, overlap the Vancouver there. Wow, beautifully done. Look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see. Oh. Ooh, good one, good one. Are you happy to be home? Yeah, I'm happy to be on Sitka. She stayed right where we put her. <laughs> so she's been a good girl. And now <laughs> we're going to give her a little bath because there's a construction site like just across the parking lot and it gets dusty. And in just one week, the decks get... can't really tell on camera, but we just track all that dust inside. So I'm just going to close the hatch, give her a quick rinse. And then I got to rinse off some cockpit cushions as well, you know, because... Sometimes cockpit cushions decide that they want to go in a compartment where it's prone to mold a bit. So you get little spots on them. Then I get a brush, brush, brush. And look at our friend, look at our friend. Oh no. This is Pedro. 
And this was a gift from my aunt, Sylvie. And look at this. Oh. Welcome to Sitka. Welcome to Sitka. <laughs> Welcome to Sailing Sitka. Welcome to Sailing Sitka. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Like. Okay. <laughs> like. Like. And comment. And comment. You heard him. You heard it from Pedro first. Come show your friend. Hi, hi, my name is 